I've got a package here. I know what's in it, so I'm going to open it by itself. The camera angle has been specifically chosen for what I've got to do today, so that's why it looks a little bit different. I've gone back to my old above the bench view for this particular item. I haven't done this for a while. Been about a year since I've used this, I think. Anyway, let's get into it. It's from PCBY for six years. Not nine years. Six years. Let's open it up. Another pen, some more stickers. So thanks so much PCB Way for supplying this to me at no cost. This is uh, free for the purpose of review. This is a project I want to build. Fingers crossed I've messed it up. <laughs> There's always that. So we'll see if I've got this right or not. Here's the board. As you can see it says voltage divider. This is the back. And that is the front. I'm hoping I've got all this right, I'm hoping I've got these footprints right and that sort of stuff. I don't know until the binding posts turn up. I haven't got a binding post yet. I'm really hoping these are right. If they're not, I might have to drill a hole in them, <laughs> make them bigger. I actually don't know. Although I could always put wires on instead instead of direct binding posts, but you know, that's part of the plan is to bind straight onto it. So we have binding post attachments here, inputs here with the guard, outputs here with the guard, and resistor ladders and also an adjustable resistor here in the centre. Now this is all e nigged as well, so I've got PCB way to do a gold plate on that, it's all nice. It looks really nice, isn't it? Beautiful board. And as you can see, I've got lots of stitching around various parts. Um, necessary, I don't know, I thought I'd chuck it anyway, because why not? And the plan is that this is going to be either a 10 to 1 or 100 to 1 voltage divider. So you can plug in a DC source on this side, say 100 volts, and you get 10 volts out this side, or one volt out of this side. So you can actually do testing of high voltage gear and verification that it's actually okay on something which can only measure a lower voltage or measure a low voltage with precision. So some things don't like to do that so much. So my HP 345C, we're going to do 300 volts max. So if I use this board as a 10 to 1, then I could actually do a thousand volt into it, into this board, and get 100 volts out and get good resolution. Obviously you're going to be scaled down a little bit, but it's going to give you enough resolution that you know what you're doing. Obviously, you know, you have to multiply it by 10 to get an actual reading, but that's the plan. Whether or not I can make this accurate enough, I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, I've chosen values of resistors here based upon theoretical measurements. I haven't done any testing, done no testing whatsoever, I haven't breadboarded it. I'd have sat down with a resistor calculator and thought, right, what resistors do I need to use? <laughs> so these are using 1206 resistors. The reason for that is because they're physically big, which means they've got a better voltage rating and more isolation. And that's also why there's a big string of resistors instead of just using a few. I've got a big voltage string, so there's a lot of division across each resistor. So in theory, they can take 200 volts each. So I've got five sections. Right. So there's actually 10, 10 resistors in each stage. 20 across the terminals. Okay, so as far as voltage goes, if it's a thousand volts in, it's okay because you've got effectively 10 resistors in series across that to give you 100 volts across a resistor. In theory, obviously, you know, roughly. Breakdown voltage is not looking at. Obviously, the actual voltage strings will be different because one side's got to take a lot more than the other because it's just a voltage divider, all right? And inside here, I've got a trimmer which just goes across a couple of resistors, and the reason for that is that I can then, if I need to trim the value, I can use this trimmer here to do it. It'll see 25 turn trimmer, so it gives me a lot of precision. I don't expect the resistor values to be great, because I'm just going to be using off-the-shelf resistors, I'm not using anything precision, no precision resistors. I probably will do eventually, but this is the first concept to see if it actually works. If it works, then I'll use precision resistors. Um, if it doesn't, then I might do it again in a different way. So I'm hoping this works. Um, I've got, say, 10 boards here, please be maybe 10 boards. I have got a few different things. I could try a different resistor vent network. So you don't necessarily have to use the resistors I've got marked on here. You see I've marked on here the values which I've worked out, which are what I actually wanted to use. I've marked it all on here. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're restricted to. You can put any resistors on here you want. So you could actually change the ratios. You know, you can do 50 to 1 or 5 to 1 or even, you know, you just change the resistors to change that. And um, I may even do that. I don't know. It's possible, isn't it? I could even do a 5 to 1 ratio instead of a 10 to 1 and potentially increase the precision. Anyway, we'll see. Let's start building it. I should also mention, in here, 
will be a stencil. I've never used a stencil before, I've never had one before, never actually bothered. I've always just um, done stuff by hand and never really worried about it. But this time I thought, oh, I'll get a stencil because, you know, it's not much more to get a stencil and it could potentially make the job a lot easier. Which I might even just use it like that. <laughs> it's, it's like stuck in. You know, so it's sort of stuck against the, I might even just leave it like that. Um, that might work. Trying to get lined up would be interesting, but uh, yeah, I have to figure out how to do this. But I've never used a stencil before, and yeah, it lines up. There you go, lines up. So I might even use that assembly. I might just leave it like that and just stick a locating thing on there. You stick some paste across this, then that obviously marks up all your pads, and then you place the parts and heat it up, and you're done. Much easier than individual soldering. So I thought, well, because I'm getting so many resistors on here, there are 20 resistors to put on this thing. I thought, well, instead of doing them all individually, I'll try doing a pasting and we'll see how that goes. And what I've actually done is I've got parallel resistors, so the serious chain, five down each side, in parallel pairs as well. That means you've got two resistors in parallel, so I've doubled the values. The two in parallel means that you've got a slightly better chance on averages of getting a more accurate value. Because obviously you've got tolerances of resistors, so there's also going to be the old bell curve thing where some are exactly on the correct value, some will be a bit below, some will be a bit above. And the idea then is that there's a chance that you might get one which is a bit below and one which is a bit above. If you're lucky, if you're unlucky you get two which are a bit below. But then the next two might be a little bit above. Right? So the idea of doing that is just to improve the averages and the chances of it becoming more accurate. That's the only reason. Also increase the current handling capacity because obviously, you know, Little resistors can only take so much, but you put two in parallel and double the current. So there's also that part of it as well. But the main reason I did that is for to improve the chance of getting that more accurate result. And obviously the trimmer here is to compensate if that's not good enough. All right. So the first thing I need to do, I think, is give us a bit of a clean down, a bit of IPA, just to make sure it's all nice and fresh. Shouldn't really matter that much, but should just do as a matter of course anyway. I mean, it's brand new. Who knows? Maybe some residue from the battery or something like. That. Really don't know. So now I need to put this in the stencil. Now I've already, I've got this stuff. I've had this here for ages. It's well expired. Um, but it worked last time I used it. It's getting a bit hard, but the middle bit's still soft, so I can still use it. Kind of. Just try and get this thing lined up. I think that's good enough. That's pretty close. Not perfect, but close enough. So let's get some uh, of this expired paste on here. Yeah, you can see expired paste. It's not the best stuff. It needs to stay inside the middle. The middle bit's okay, still the outside's all crusty. It's really gone off, but uh, yeah. Mm. We'll get some on here. And we'll see how we go with it. Now I need to find something to spread it with. Not really set up for this stuff. Let's just give us a go. See if we can get it. Okay. Done. Not that bad, is it? It's certainly a lot easier than doing it by hand. Now I've got those place sort of components. So how did it come out? Let's have a look. Yeah, that came out right. I think that's fine. Let's place some parts on. So this is what I'm going to be using. One of these Chinese sample books, okay? Not the highest quality stuff, I expect. So if you can get this to work, if you use decent resistors, then it'll be all right, it'll be even better. So I might do this end first, actually. I might just do this big patch here first, which is um, R1 to R10, which is 470K. Right, so all this lot here is 470s. So let's get a bunch of those out. I'll get my decent tweezers, because I'm messing around trying to struggle with tweezers. No one's got time for that. I just want to find out I get the footprints wrong. Or something stupid like that. Now, should I put them all the same around to make it look nice? I think I should, eh? Now, I've actually got two choices about how I do this um, as far as melting the, the solder paste. I have not only hot air, but I also have a hot plate, which I could use, which I've only used once, I think. It's certainly for desk here. I could always get that out and use a hot plate. 
and see how well that goes for using that to uh, solder these down. It is a bit cold in this room actually, so maybe I will do that because it'll help warm the room up. Right, so that's what a 470 is in place, and now we'll do the next ones. Now my choice here is I can do either a 10 to 1 ratio or 100 to 1 ratio. Now this number here, the 47k and these ones, is a 10 to 1, and 4.7k is 100 to 1. And the same for these units over here as well. These values here also relative to those, so that's a 10k, or 10 times, 100 times. Right, so and 10 times 100 times, so those are values I need to use. The decision now is which one do I want to do? Now, I did this up all this lot here is all the same values because that's the main divider chain, so those drop the main bulk of the voltage off it. So then it's obviously just this section here which does that final tuning basically for the actual divider. So, which one do I want? Do I want a 10 to 1 or 100 to 1? So, I think I'll do the 100 to 1 ratio, so therefore I need 4.7k, 7.5k, and 3.6k. Okay, so okay, get it all right. So let's do the bigger value first, just work down through the value. So we get 7.5k first. So we need two of those. Make sure you check out PCUA as well for sponsoring this video because they support me quite well. When I, if I want a board made or anything like that, they've always been really good to help me out. So make sure you support them too. If everyone supports each other, the world's a better place. And 7.5 here, so it's 18 as well, I18, which is that one there, so it's two side by side. The reason these two values here are different compared to the rest of them is because of the trimmer. Right? So obviously I've got to allow for the trimmer being in here, so I've had to change these visitor values here to compensate for the trimmer being in parallel with them. Right? Because it's in parallel, not in series, in order to again reduce the effect and to make it less touchy. So anything I've done, I've tried to think about keeping it quiet. The other thing I've also thought about is, that, is the, the grounding, like the, you've got the guard obviously, and possibly linking it to the negative side. I mean I might do that on a switch or something on the final unit, I, I haven't decided on that part yet. I guess we'll just play with it and see how it goes. Because sometimes linking the, the guard to the negative can actually be beneficial. When you're dealing with really small signals it can help get some of the noise down. Uh, next one's going to do uh, the 4.7s. I will try put all the drawings and everything for this on my Patreon page, so if you want to become a Patreon, this will be available for you to download. You'll be able to get this, the uh, the Gerber files and everything for this as well, and you'll be able to make it yourself. All right. So if you're interested in trying to make one of these, the files will be available, but only on my Patreon page. I'm just going to give it to my patrons only. Because I didn't list them specifically, I said 14 to 17. I would have saved space on a piece of bill. I could have probably said 15, 16, 17. I probably could have done that actually. So I think I'm going to try and put some more effort into making stuff just my Patreons and trying to do a bit more things for that. Time allowing of course. Um, I know there are some other YouTubers out there that do really well with their Patreon support. And I do appreciate the Patreons I already have, thank you very much for everyone that does support me already. Really do appreciate your efforts and your input. Because you help to buy things and, and boost the channel up and that sort of stuff. So. Uh, so. 21 is over here, so that's fine. I've just got to put two more of these in, and that's that lot done. Also, I've recently added memberships onto YouTube. I've recently been eligible for that, so I've added that onto YouTube. So, if you want to support me through YouTube instead, you can do that. But through YouTube, you won't get the same benefits I get to my Patreons, like the files, stuff like that. Can't, there's no real way of doing it on the YouTube side of it. So if you did a Patreon, it'd be better, but the YouTube's an option if you're not interested in getting any files or anything like that. Service manuals, that kind of thing. If you just want to help me out and give me some money to donate, then by all means do the YouTube one. So that's that lot. Now it's got to put on 21, which is a 3.6k. The, the eagle eye of you may have noticed that the ratios have changed slightly between the 10 to 1 and the 100 to 1, where I'm not keeping the same as the values. Like this is a 10 to 1 ratio. This should really be a 10 to 1 ratio. And so should that, but I decided to change the way I did it. Right, so that's all those. So what I might do is get the hot plate out and we'll give that a go. Use the hot plate instead of hot air, it'll be quieter for a start. So here's my hot plate, I did this in a mail bag quite some time ago, I've only used it once I think, I just tried it for something, I think I was using it on a MacBook or something like that, I was using it on. It's been sitting for a disc ever since. So all I actually need to do is get some power plugged into it, flick the thing on, set the temperature to what I want, and we'll see how we go.
can it do it? I guess we'll find out. Okay, I've turned it on. I've got it set to 240 degrees. Because that sounds like a nice number. Oh, yeah, 240. And let's put the board on and we shall watch and wait. As it heats up, it's going to take a little while. It's 116 degrees right now. So unfortunately you're going to get the lights reflecting off it, but uh, you know, I have to live with that I'm afraid. So we'll see how long it takes anyway. Hot air is probably going to be quicker, but I thought I'd give this a go because it looks like an interesting technique. I haven't tried this way before, so why not give something a go? I might have to nudge these components around in place as it, uh, as it settles. I might have to give things a bit of a nudge, things like that. We'll see how we go. I don't even know how this paste is going to go because it's old paste. It's quite, you know, as you saw, it's quite old paste. It's a bit dodgy. It may not even work right. Well, the flux is coming off. I haven't seen the solder go yet, though. I'm hoping this paste is okay. If it's not, it's not that big a deal. We'll just get another board. And I've got some more paste, I've got some new stuff. But I just want to see if this old stuff's going to work. I could always get another board and just move the parts over and repaste it. Or clean this board off, even. Oh, I'm seeing some movement there. Solder's starting to go. Excellent. That's at 240 degrees. It's just reached that temperature. God, I'm moving too much. <laughs> Try not to touch a plate because it's hot. done it but yeah I think the lack of flux has been a bit of a problem I wonder if I can drip some on let's drip some flux on and see what happens shall we I've been burning <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, that seems to have done the job. We'll turn it back off again. It's all melted, at least. Now I've got some flux to clean off. Yay. Let's go let it cool down again. Let's get the board off. And I'll come back. So these are the trimmers I'm going to use. Some IC stock or six stock, go figure. 200k trimmers. I've got a bunch of these, so I'll use one of these on here. That's what I designed it for. Then I've got some basic resistance measurements I can take once it's in place to tell me whether or not it's set correctly based on my theoretical measurements, which are noted down here 130.555, well, quad 5, and 11.868. 7 for 100. So that's the one I've got to trim for is what 11. That's the theory anyway. So let's put the trimmer in. Also we've got to solder it from the other side of the board. That's completely the wrong tip. No, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> I was soldering something quite big the other day and I haven't changed the tips yet. Hmm. Let's see if we go. It's probably going to be massively hot as well. Doing the job. I've got to change the tip over to the other one. This is ridiculously big. Massive thermal mass, anyway. Make sure it's definitely seated down nicely. Alright. And it's wonky. Is that going to annoy me? Yeah, it's going to annoy me. <laughs> Why is it wonky? <laughs> oh, well, maybe the footprint's very slightly different or something. Anyway, it's in. We'll cut these legs off. Oh, 
don't want to get any flux residue anywhere because the flux could potentially affect the readings on when it's you know working. Could potentially cause a problem. So, so there we go, it's built. Well, kind of. I still need the winding posts, they haven't arrived yet. I'll be doing a follow-up for this video as well, showing the final assembly, and I'm probably gonna make a box for it and that sort of stuff as well. There's a few projects all going on, like three sponsorships all rolled into one to make one project, so make sure you check those out when it does actually come through. Now the question is, does it work? Well, let's just have a look and see what we actually get when we do these measurements. So I should be able to measure um, what we got. 4.7, 8.4 or so. I can't remember exactly what it was. Anyway, it says 11 from one end to the other, but anyway. So from here to here, I'm getting 7K, which isn't right. That's not right. Uh, what's wrong here? Let's measure each stage. 2.3, that's correct. 2.35, that's exactly correct. That's a really good one. These are 7.5 k's in parallel, so they should be about f oh, 0 ohms. Well, that's not right. Um, that's not right. That's okay. So it looks like these two, this four here, have got an issue. How about this one? Is that one right? That's okay. So maybe I've got a solder paste problem. Let me just check this other string as well. 235. Two thirty four, two thirty four, two thirty five, zero. Okay, I must have some bloody solder paste bridging underneath these parts. So I think I'm going to, have to lift a couple of these parts off. These like these ones here, and that four. I've got an issue. Maybe I've got a, a solder bridge underneath. So I'm going to, have to get the hot air out. That's a bit annoying. Okay, let's get this fixed. Fluff on there, double net. Probably this case of lifting them up and reseating them, it's probably what it's going to take. I guess it's the problem of using old pace, isn't it? There's a risk that it could get bridging. Yeah, see that bridging under there? There's the problem. Sounds alright. around the other ones, oh, not around, just that far. Got to try and make sure I don't melt the pot. Is that one? No, these ones here. Yep, there's a bridge there too, let's go on. Right. Yes, I think I might chuck that post away actually and get some new paste. It certainly isn't uh, doing what it should be actually. Let's just check the rest of these. I'm not sh now I'm not confident about all of these. Yeah, I was looking at the dodge under there too. So yeah, don't use old pace people. Yeah, they're all looking a bit dodgy. I think I might do the whole lot. Because I don't want it to accidentally track underneath the parts either. Having a partial bridge may not be um, a bridge at you know a few volts that the multimeter puts out, but it might be a bridge at a thousand volts. So, oops. Yeah, so I think, so I think I'm going to throw that to uh, throw that paste away. Use the new stuff from now on. This isn't gone as well as I wanted to. Well that was annoying. But necessary. This rechest, I mean it's gonna be cooling down so it's not gonna be right, but you know, we'll get a better idea now. There you go. 13k and there to there. 1.1 meg. Two, 
334, that is all correct now. 234, 234, 36, that's correct. 234, 234, here we go, right. Annoying, certainly. Yeah, well, never mind. That's going in the bin. It was okay when I first got it, but I don't use the paste very often. But it's sitting around for quite a few years. Well, about three years, I think, about it. Did it expire? Uh, 2017. Right. <laughs> Manufactured 2017, one year shelf life. So this has been expired for two years. Yeah, that's why. Right, let's try and trim this thing, see if I can get the value I was expecting to get. So I believe I need 11.8687K. Um, which you can't see at this camera. Anyway, we'll see if we can get it. So that's across the output. I might have to spin this around actually so I can work on it. Might be a bit easier that way. That way it faces me up and get the screwdriver on. Let's have a look. So I think I need to go anti clockwise. Not sure where the pot is either. Could be either end. That is dropping, so I'm going the right way. But it's not dropping very much. That's a little bit concerning. It means I might not have got my ranges exactly right. It's too, it might be too far towards one end of the range of the pot. It's only moving slowly, but it is getting faster, which is actually a bit concerning because it means I probably haven't got my resistances quite right. There we go, we're getting in here. It's almost getting right towards the end of this pot. Okay, this might be a bit of a trouble when I set, set right. Also, I can't get the precision on this meter, but this will just give me a, a ballpark thing. And I'll do full wire, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, so that is now very touchy to try and get that exact number. So I don't think I've got this right. Yeah. That's way more touching than I wanted to have. That's why I put a multi-turn pot in there. So I think I need to look at these visitors values here and just see if I can tweak this slightly more. So that is actually set up. As you undo it, it reduces the resistance in this direction. Okay, so as you tighten it, it comes this way. As you loosen it, it goes that way. So what I've got then is a imbalance. Maybe I need to change this R21. That will give me better linearity, but it's only a few K as well. And then that's, the, that's to make sure you don't accidentally short those out completely. Because otherwise you go right down to one end, it shorts it. So maybe if I need to change, if I change R120, uh, R21 here, which is currently a 270K. Okay, if I reduce that one to say 200K or something like that, it'll give me 70K more range on this pot, which should put it more linear and have a less effect. Yeah, there should be more control. So if I change R R21 to a 200K, that should make us more towards one end of the pot range. I think it'll be better. Actually, I've got that wrong. It's not a 270K, so that's the 10K divider. I've got 3.6K in there. So I need to make that smaller. Okay, what I was thinking then, because that's it's a 200K pot. Maybe 200K is way too big for this particular trimming. Maybe I do need to make this pot smaller. Maybe I need to make a... Maybe I make that a 100k pot or something like that, or 50 even. Obviously, my theory, my theoretical levels are slightly out there, but uh, that's why it's all theory. It's why you test though afterwards. You don't know what you're going to get until you actually do it. All right, let's take this pot back off again. As annoying as that is, let's take it back off. Should just get the vacuum de solder out. Anyway, we should change the bloody tip. <laughs> that's what I should be doing. Anyway, oh, that's gonna be a pain. Just to get my desolder gun out, this thing's gonna work. So, what I think I'll do is quick look at this resistance here. I've got an idea, I think I might put a 50 in, but let's just have a look, see what you got as far as settings. 200k there, yeah. 3.9k there. Okay, so that's right at the end of the range, isn't it? 3.9k. Now, I was looking to put a 50 in, but now I'm thinking even a 50 might be too big. Oh, I've decided to go with a 10k, because I've got some of those. Um, obviously, this is theoretical. I mean, this is based on 
that resistance value. So if this string is wrong, then even that might be wrong still. Uh, I chose 200k thinking I'd better use that as a universal value so I can keep the same pot for both types without worrying about changing it too much. Obviously that was a mistake, it can't do it too well. So let's just get this one soldered in and I'll still have change my soldering onto it. I'm using silver solder for this as well by the way. We'll give it another go. Of course I've still got to put a voltage through here and see if I've actually got my ratios even right. I can't be that wrong. This one's sitting straight. Hmm, interesting. Oh well, I'll come back in a second. Right, let's put the meter in. We'll see what we get this time. There you go, 12 straight off the bat. So we go all the way up to one end and come down to the other end. So 12.33 is the most I can get, okay. Still is a long way down the other end. Obviously it has a very small effect on the actual ratio. That's the intention is that it's a trimmer. As I'm coming down this end, it's getting more touchy again. And what's the lowest I can go down to? I get a proper trimmer tool for this. <laughs> In fact, I've got one somewhere. Okay, 11.2. I can come down quite a bit as well, that's good. So at least it's got some range of adjustment there, which makes it a little bit less touchy, I suppose. So if you want 8.6, roughly. Obviously this meter's not going to be accurate enough for that. I need to do it properly. But I won't actually trim that properly until I actually put the voltage in and see what comes out. So for that, I need to change my setup. Right, so I've got uh, the PDVS2 Mini out. Just turned it on just now to get a chance to warm up for a second. Now, hopefully these fit. No, I haven't checked it yet. Now, obviously this is designed for binding posts, but the spacing should still fit these, and hopefully the holes will actually fit. Will that work? Oh, excellent, it works. Brilliant. So that will go in there. Let's check that spacing. Yeah, that spacing's good too. So is that one. So is that one. So is that one. And so is that one. Oh, perfect. That's great. I was quite worried about that. <laughs> Thinking if I messed it up, I have to run wires instead. So negatives at the top, positive at the bottom, right? Put the negative side of that one. And we'll put the guard on as well. Right, so that's good. So the guard is currently going to the negative of the PDVS2 Mini. So that should be injecting whatever voltage I put on here. And then I've got those measure on the output here. So what I'm going to do is hook up to my signal multimeter up the top there. Um, unfortunately you can't see it in the shot, so what I'll do is change camera angles. I'll point the camera at the signalant, and I'll change the stuff down here. And I'll tell you what I'm doing on camera. I might be able to even, I don't know, maybe I'll pop it up there or something. I'm not quite sure, maybe I could. Anyway, I'll change shots and we'll see what happens. And I've also now got my proper trimming tool. Because I'm not messing around with this thing. Okay, so here's the signalant set up. So it's just uh, to do a bit of measurement, because we want it to be zeroed. All right. Well, zero as possible. So I have it all hooked up. You can see I'm using another Pomona lead. Here's the unit here, and here's the unit here. Just put a voltage on. Um, let's do one volt and see what happens. Oh, 10 millivolts. Well, it's at least looking about right. I actually might do, if I do millivolt range, it's 100 millivolts with 1 millivolt, won't it? So if I do that, here we go. Okay. 10 millivolts, 3.1. Here we go. One millivolt should be 0.01. There it is. Well, this is where you start getting into the noise territory. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty good. Um, oh, went too far. That one. 10 volts. 100 millivolts. Okay, cool. So what I might do is trim this 10 volt one to be correct, because that should eliminate some of the noise and stuff. You get the trimmer. Hopefully I can still get onto it, even though I've got the guard in place here. Let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, yeah I can get in. Great. Right, so I need to go um, clockwise, is it? No, clockwise is higher. Anti-clockwise is lower. So, there we go. What can I go down to? just want to find out. Find out the limits. Because I might be able to actually reduce the tuning range a lot more and make it a bit easier to tune as well. So that's 94.7, so that's 90, uh, 0.95, so that's 5% out there. So it's 5% negative, I can go. Wind all the way up the other way. I 
that's just about there. That's it. Four percent positive. So I'm actually fairly well in the middle of the range. It's just not bad. That's not bad. So that's good. So I'm actually fairly well in the middle of the tuning range, which is exactly what I want actually. So let's try and get this down to 100 again, and we'll trim that. And try and get it as close as I can. This is still very touchy tuning. It's still very sensitive. And the problem with these things actually they tend to have a bit of slop in them, so they actually have like a gap in the tuning, so you tune it away one way. If you back it off, it actually relaxes it and then it then it will start pulling it back the other way. So it can be a bit of a pain like that as well. It's just the nature of the tuners. So it's just very touchy just there. It's kind of almost there, isn't it? What sort of percent accuracy do you think I should go for in this thing? If I'm putting in one 10 volts, so what's that, 0.01%? That would be. I think I'm going to do better than that. But noise is coming a factor as well, it's the only thing. Plus I'm holding the ball, which probably doesn't help. Yeah, I reckon. Good enough? This trim is still too touchy for my liking. So maybe I should have gone for a 5k instead of a 10k. Because that could be twice the um, adjustment range. Maybe. Yeah, about there. That'll do, eh? Let's just sit it. Let's put it down so it's not got any noise from me holding it. I think that's pretty good. What do you reckon? Winner, winner. Of course, you want more precision. I can also increase the power line cycles. Go 100 power line cycles. And that should also help to average out slightly more as well and give a bit better accuracy. Obviously, the reading time is a lot longer when you do that because you know it's got to do 100 power line cycles plus the auto zeroing as well. But I think that's accurate enough. I mean, you are talking about microvolts here two and a half microvolts. Don't forget that. So, I think that I won't be happy with this until I've actually got this thing mounted inside of like a metal shielded box or something like that and properly done. That way, it will actually reject the noise a lot better and behave a better better obviously an exposed board like this isn't the best thing for noise so i reckon that would be good once i've got that done and i can just tweak it i might even change that pot again i might make it even smaller just to give my adjustment range a bit more flexibility there because even though that it still seems a bit too touchy it is in the middle of the range but i think i might need to look at maybe changing that pot to say a 5k or even a 2k and then changing that resistor, that R21 at the end of it, to uh, bring that range down a bit or something, or, or maybe even, actually, I think I'd increase it, wouldn't I? Yeah, I'd have to increase it. So I'd have to increase R21 slightly in value and reduce the pot in value to reduce that adjustment range, but give me more precision, which I think was what I'm probably going to go for. Obviously, because I'm using basic parts, Tempco, stuff like that, that's going to be an issue on these. I mean, I may not get the precision I want because of the Tempco. I, I really don't know. You see it's moving around, it's changing the values, all right? That's what the noise is doing. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, if I stick my hand on the back here, does that change the values very much? So it's drifting down. So the temperature is having an effect on that. As I'm heating up that part of the divider, it's changing. All right? So that's something to consider as well, is that, you know, the temp codes of these resistors isn't the best. If I do the other side, let's see what that does. So, this is the underbox. I need to get a proper winding post, that sort of stuff, but it works. Make sure you check out PCWay, he's sponsored me, so thank you much, PCWay. Give you a thumbs up if you like the video. If you're interested in getting the files for this so you can make your own, you can see how easy it was to make. Go to my Patreon page and you can download the Gerber files and stuff from there. I'll put them all on there. So the actual board files will be there. So if you want to make your own, 
you can choose my ball files, send them to PC Way, and get some made. Easy as that. You don't have to use the same specs, but I use gold plate and stuff like that, which increase the cost. I've used yellow, which increase the cost. So you can always just get a basic prototype board, like five units made for a couple of dollars, and do those ones. 10 volts in, 100 millivolts out. That's all right. 100 millivolts in. Basically, one millivolt out. It's not bad, is it?